today's workshop is on how to design and deliver an elevator speech. I hope that is what you have come to expect because that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, my name is Brian Sikora and I'm retired, but I had 40 years experience in sales and sales management in a number of diverse and distribution channels. For 14 years, I worked for the Pillsbury Company in their dry grocery division. And in the last 23 years at Landscape Structures, a, uh, a commercial playground company. The experience that I come aboard with is, is uh, a lot of different distribution channels with park and rec industry, consumer products, the grocery wholesale, uh, both wholesale and retail, and magazine publishing and advertising. I am a part of the Minneapolis Business Mentors and we are a premier source of small business advice for entrepreneurs and established businesses. We are a volunteer nonprofit organization whose mission is to promote the success of entrepreneurs and small business in the Minneapolis area. We are basically made up of a, a number of retired business people from the, the Minneapolis area encompassing all uh, all, all kinds of business and sales, marketing, uh, accounting, uh, IT. We we offer we have a pretty long, big depth of um, of experience to offer the new people. So that's the end of the paid political commercial. Let's talk about what we're going to do today in how to deliver a uh, elevator speech and and most importantly how to write one. So we're going to, the agenda is going to be about, we're going to look at the definition of an elevator speech, the process steps involved, the do's and don'ts, and then maybe even get into a writing exercise. Um, before we move along, I would like for you to, I encourage you to put any questions you have into the chat box, and we'll answer those at the end. We'll try and do the audio at the end also so we could have a, a discussion. But I don't have the ability to see the chat box in the presentation mode that I'm in currently. So if you don't mind, just put a uh, mention in the chat box. Okay. Uh, oh, and the other one thing that I've heard is on the this, uh, Twin City Startup is to... Um, Maximize your screen. You'll get the best results if you maximize the screen. Okay, so let's go ahead with this. First off, the definition. The definition is really of an elevator speech. It's, it's a short description of a product, service, service, company, idea, or self. It should be delivered in the time span of an elevator ride, approximately 30, 30 seconds. Uh, you know, we're not talking about the top of the IDS Center in downtown Minneapolis of 55 floors. Um, but the, the idea behind the elevator speech is to simply convey the, the concept or topic in an exciting way. Uh, unlike a sales pitch, and there's a fine line definition or difference there, there may not be a clear buyer, this buyer-seller relationship. Uh, it could be simply a meeting a new person for the first time and ask, what do you do? This could be, I mean, it doesn't have to be an elevator. It could be in a restaurant, uh, walking down the street, all, all kinds of venues. But the main goal is to ignite a two-sided conversation, not just you talking, but involving the other person. You're looking for a response. Think of, of the elevator pitch is a Twitter version of your business plan proposal. You can use mo no more than 280 characters during this 30 second elevator ride. Don't, don't overburden them with information. This is a first contact. It's a very precise, uh, concise presentation of ideas covering the critical aspects that we're delivered within a few seconds. Most people speak 120 to 200 words per minute. Using a comprehensible 75 words, slightly lower than the 
average speaking speed in your in your 30 second L, uh, elevator speech so where do you use the speech it could be networking events uh, meeting potential clients and investors uh, potential suppliers partners and employees and conference and trade shows anytime you meet someone new it's it's also good in this day of, of remote work and access to be able to come across well on a Zoom call in a brief period of time. So the elevator pitch, as I said, is, is quick and, and fast. In this little cartoon, it said, you've got until the fourth floor to sell yourself. So it, you have to make a very, very quick impression. I want to show you this little video that is kind of uh, interesting. It's this guy, we'll call him Steven Spielberg, gets on an elevator and you have less than 30 seconds to pitch him about your book called Jaws, why it should be a movie. How do you do that? It's pretty clear after the first two notes of that intro music that it was Jaws. Everybody knows that song. Um, but Peter Benchley, the author of Jaws, pitched that book idea for almost four years before it was published. A year later, Spielberg released the movie, uh, and it is a, incurred about $472 million in box office sales. Not bad. All right. Let's talk about the process, process steps of designing a elevator speech. There's the opening, the who you are, the problem, a solution, a difference, and lastly, a call to action. The opening is how do you get the, the person's attention right out of the gate? And there's a lot of uh, ways of doing this, and we're going to go through those a little bit more in depth in just a second. Uh, who are you? You need to explain right away to the person you're talking what, who you are and what you're doing. And most importantly, what problem do you solve? You need to identify the offer to your customers or clients. Avoid listing only features and, and instead focus on benefits. We'll, again, we'll go more into each one of these in a little bit later. Uh, what solution do you offer? This is that can be used through your mission statement. And the difference, what sets you apart from your competitors? What sets you apart from people doing similar type business? And lastly, a call to action. And this is an important part of, of the elevator speech. When you're not going to make, more than likely, you're not going to have a million dollar sale on an elevator. But at least you can open the door to start that dialogue. So let's talk about the opening, the first part of the, the first part of the process. And this is the best way of, of looking at these is is by a couple we got four different suggestions. You open with a compelling statement, an interesting question, a fact or statistic, or a metaphor. Um, these are what you want to do is spark their interest quickly and fast, and this is how you might do it. So here's a few suggestions on each of the, the tactics that are used in, a, in an opening statement. The first one is a compelling opening statement. So this could be, based on our experience, independent coffee shop owners spend over $5,800 on a single coffee roaster. Our company cuts that price in half. Uh, this grabs the attention better than saying, 
For instance, my company has developed a small scale cost effective coffee roaster. It sounds nice to say cost effective small scale, but what does that really mean? What they're saying is that we can spend less than 5,800, we can spend less than 2,500 for this. So we'll get back to this one a little bit later in the, in the uh, sample. So interesting question. What, what could that be? It could be something as simple as, if I could show you a way of saving thousands of dollars, would you be interested? I mean, at that point, somebody may stop and listen. Using a fact or statistic example, this has to be a proven fact. So for instance, in this example that I'm using, our advertisements are exposed to customers 2,220 seconds on average. Whoa, what, what could that possibly be? I wish you could talk back to me, but you all know the Starbucks logo. And the Starbucks logo on that coffee cup, it take what they what their research has found is that it takes about 37 minutes for someone to drink a cup of coffee. That's 2,220 seconds. So I think I can drink a cup of coffee in much quicker than 37 seconds. But the point is that you have it out there. You're showing that advertisement the entire time. Uh, another metaphor example, and I use this one during my working days, is I make fun for children. Sounds a little, I don't know what, what we're talking about here, until I tell them, I make playgrounds. I work for a playground manufacturer that, that manufactures and designs playgrounds for city schools and parks. But at the end of the day, what we did was we made a fun time for children. Okay. The second part, second uh, step in the process is... Uh, is, it's really critical. You've grabbed their attention, you've used the compelling statement, the opening statement, and you've got their attention. Now it's time to really get into who you are and, and what's going on. You start, you, you've got their attention for 20 seconds, in the first 20 seconds, let's say, or 10 seconds. Now it's time to, to, to get to where the rubber hits the road. On the who you are, it's really quite simple. It's Use a name and brief description of what your company does. Don't forget to include the name of the company. Very important. So think about that. The name, your name and the name of the company. That's pretty easy. So, and then the, the next step is the problem. What problem do you solve? You identify the value you offer to your customers or clients. Avoid listing features and instead translate them into benefits. And, and this is a, a really, it, it's, it's kind of hard to accept and understand at first, but it, it makes sense after a while. The features and benefits of a product are not interchangeable. A feature is something that the product or service has or is. A benefit is the outcome or result that users will experience by using that product or service. You really have to kind of think about the, the, the feature is that, I like to think of it as the physical part of it. So a real easy descriptor that I've used in the past is, is think about a pencil. There's a, a pencil that has six-sided, that has a six-sided side, and then there's a pencil that is a rounded. So the the feature is is the the structure of the pencil, but maybe the benefit is oh when it's it fits your hand easier when it's six sided or it's more comfortable to write when it's a rounded pencil. So that's kind of really basic, but it is really about the feature is the product, the benefit is the outcome or result of that. Okay, the solution. This is where what do you offer 
<coughs> to make it easier on the um, oops, whoop, 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 whoop. I think I did something wrong there. Okay, sorry about that. So the solution is, uh, you. this is where you give a brief summary of your business, including key specialties or, or strengths. If you're, not, if you're not sure what to include, try writing everything that comes to mind down on a piece of paper. Once you've recorded it, go through it and remove anything that's not absolutely critical to explaining your business. So a process of elimination, feel free to write as much as you want and then edit. Focus on the problems that you can solve. For instance, we can in decrease order time by 20%. Uh, using your mission statement or even a product listing as a guide, write a sentence or two about what you do every day in your business. If your emphasis is on time-saving techniques, state briefly how those strategies work. Okay, the difference. What makes you different from everybody else? If there's no differentiator, you're selling your industry or a commodity, not your product. There's no particular reason to buy from you. So you have got to find out what, uh, you've got to find out and identify what the difference is. Uh, strong differentiators contain a fact that is concrete and independently measures rather than unsubst unsubstantiated claims and opinions. They should never refer to your emotions, which are, those are, that's irrelevant to the customer. If you can define your unique selling proposition as a guide, write about what sets you apart from every other business owner at who does what you do. A unique selling proposition, or USP, um, is the one thing that makes your business better than the competition. It's a specific benefit that makes your business stand out when compared to other businesses in the market. Uh, for example, here's a USP, Freaky Fast. That's a unique selling proposition. Anything come to mind when you see Freaky Fast? I would suggest most of you are probably thinking Jimmy John's. And Jimmy John's is that unique selling proposition is what made them what they are today. Um, they started in, Jimmy John's started in 1983 in, in Champaign, Urbana, Illinois, University of Illinois. Their main competitor is Subway, which started in 1965. That's an 18-year uh, head start. But they and they do very similar things: Subway, breads, number of breads, uh, fresh, made right there. So, what was the big thing that that uh, Jimmy John's did? It was the fast delivery, and that's what set them apart. Um, so they, they, and they have kept up with that the whole time. When they started, they were, as I said, they were on the University of Illinois campus and near the dormitories there. And what they found is that dormitory delivery made a big difference for them. And their model has certainly worked today. So that difference, again, if you can define your USP, the unique selling proposition, and write about what sets you apart from everybody else, you're gonna be way ahead of the ball game. Okay, the last part of the step is call to action. And I've, I've seen this a, a number of times during the years is people would do, it, mostly in sales presentations, but also in these elevator speeches, do tremendous getting the people's attention, really engaging them, explaining what they do, how they do it, but they forget to call to action. That is, ask for the order. Um, this call to action, it might be as simple as just getting a business card. Maybe it's somebody that you want to meet with later. 
it's as I said early on, you're not going to get a million dollar sale on the 30 second elevator ride, but you're really planting the seeds for future discussions. Uh, and probably the best call to action is to ask a question. Um, and that could be, you know, can we meet for coffee? Can we, can I schedule an appointment with you? Can we set up a Zoom call? Uh, or it may be something that you, you suggested the problems that they're facing, that the question might be, what's the business activity that you find the most tedious? Maybe we can help you solve that. Uh, <coughs> another good one, what keeps you awake at night? What, what makes you lose sleep? Okay, so we, we looked at the six steps here. I've gone through that. The opening, who you are, problem, solution, difference, call to action. Now, let's take a, or let's look at a real life situation and kind of dissect this one. This is, we'll, we'll set this up, uh, that this is a, you are a salesman for a coffee and roasting company that has a new roaster for sale to small independent coffee shops. So let's see, let's look at this elevator speech and see how it fits. So I'm going to ask you to read along uh, while I talk or speak it. But it goes, hi, my name is Sarah Welch, and my company has developed a small-scale, cost-effective coffee roaster to keep independent coffee shops roast their own beans. I represent Green Coffee. We know getting quality beans and roasting them in independent shops can be expensive, so we also purchase beans direct from premium organic growers in Brazil and Vietnam, the number one and number two producers in the world. We help our customers save money and improve the quality of their coffee, and we provide growers guaranteed revenue and promote sustainability and accountability. Can we set up a time so we can learn more about us and what we offer coffee shops like yours? <coughs> that whole thing took about 40 seconds. It has 111 words. This is thinking about the elevator, how how much time you've got. This one is a little bit over. So let's really dissect and dig this into this. The opening and who you are. This is, uh, hi, my name is Sarah Welch. And their company is Green Coffee. And they, they have roaster business. So you've, you've kind of figured that one out. <coughs> In this example, she, Sarah Welch, May, uh, says they have developed a small-scale, cost-effective coffee roaster. Remember earlier in the presentation, we were talking about compelling statements. Is that very compelling? Eh, it kind of gets it, but wouldn't it be better if she said, my name's Sarah Welch. Based on our experience, independent coffee shop owners spend over $5,800 on a single roaster. Our company cuts that price in half. So it kind of gives you a, um, a real real hat to hang, a real hook to hang your hat on. Um, and with this opening, this compelling statement, remember that you have about eight seconds to grab someone's attention. <laughs> and is it strong enough to grab it to last for the next 22 seconds? All right. The, uh, <clears throat> here's the problem statement. It gets right into it. We know getting quality beans and roasting them in independent shops. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm so dry. Okay. We know getting quality beans and roasting them in independent shops can be expensive. Then the opposite solution, and really it's two part, kind of mentioned in the first, in the intro, um, that they have a cost effective coffee roaster, but they also uh, purchase beans in Brazil and Vietnam, the number one and number two producers in the world. 
Okay, they got the solution. What about the difference? At the Green Coffee Company, they help their customers save money and improve the quality of their coffee and provide growers guaranteed revenue and promote sustainability and accountability. And notice here, I always want to mention this too. When you offer the difference between what your product, your company offers, and what somebody else does, you don't have to name them directly. You can you can see in this one, here's a difference. It's up to them to maybe call their current coffee people and say, well, how do you uh, improve the quality of your coffee? All right. And lastly, the call to action. Can we set up a time so we can learn more about us and what we offer coffee shops like yours? Simple question, What? how do we do it? Um, so this is, it's, all in all, it's a, it's a, it's a very good um, call to action. All right, a little bit of a uh, writing exercise. I, I keep going through this, but the opening, who are you? What problem do you solve? What is your solution? How are you different? And a call to action. Remember these six steps. This is the the whole crux of, of the thing. <laughs> Take the time to write answers to each of those steps. And then rewrite making strong, powerful sentences. And eliminate any unnecessary words. You need to connect phrases to each other. And yet the, the speech, the elevator speech, has to flow natural and smoothly. And then, this is the biggest thing. Practice, practice, practice. So this is a sheet that you could do something like this. Um, just fill in the, the blanks and you'll be surprised. Once you have the that sheet filled in, uh then rewrite rewrite and rewrite i i did this exercise myself um, <clears throat> my first draft came in at about 148 words and 74 seconds after four revisions i got it down to 85 words and 35 seconds it is it sounds easy but it, it's a challenge and you really have to edit and rewrite the entire time to make it smooth. I, one of the things I learned from this exercise was uh, I have a new appreciation for writers who can create a TV or radio commercial that's only 30 seconds long. <laughs> okay. Cut it down to 75 words. So I want to <coughs> share with you a quick video, it's a couple minutes, on an elevator speech. There's four people involved in this. Uh, the scenario is a college dean happens to meet four different students in an elevator. Watch this and see who would you want to spend more time with and learn what they have to offer. Classes last semester. I'm looking forward to how that turns out. And I mean, I just can't believe, especially for I mean, money and banking. Please, you know, I do what I do. <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I, I'm, in, I'm in the elevator with President Trump right now. I didn't even. Okay, hang on. No, no, stop. No, okay. Hey, and I mean, if, if you've got anybody in the college of business or anybody that knows, you, if you need a qualified professional, somebody that will actually get the job done well, then uh, you know what? You know what to talk to. All right, so, okay. Oh my god, hi, I'm Chris. 
nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you President. Although um, I'm a college business ambassador and um, I like art and painting and whiteboarding. Um, my mom is like a biggest fan. Can we take a picture together really quick? Uh, Will you hold it? Take our picture? You're on for longer. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's okay. perfect. That's perfect. I'll send it to her. Okay. So, how are things? How's the first lady, the kids? You know, all this. Uh, the cheese? Sure. Uh, so, um, what are your plans as president? Well, uh, what, was, what was it? Have you met all these people? He's really cool. I think your shoes are really shiny. You shine on yourself. You're the uh, president. I bet you have time to do that for you. Uh, you're just the nicest guy. Uh, oh, this is my floor. I'll see you later. Hey, President Adam. Hello. My name is Jessica Terrell. Jessica. I'm a college and business ambassador, and I'm also on the speech and debate team. I have some great ideas that can really help this college. I know you're a very busy man, but I would love to let you hear them. I love to hear them. Uh, I'm just headed to lunch. I was going to grab the you and go talk later. Yes, thank you. Love to have you. Love you. It's pretty evident that the fourth. Uh, student was the one that you'd want to spend time with. Uh, kind of over dramatic. I don't know if you get asked to lunch right away, but if that did, it's a great elevator speech. So a couple do's and don'ts for elevator speeches. Do explain what you do. Identify the goal. Keep it simple. End with a question, you know, the call to answer. Define your unique selling proposition and practice, practice, practice. It's important that you have all of this set up. Um, the, some of the don'ts, don't use trade industry jargon unless you're talking to somebody in that industry. Um, otherwise, they won't know what you're talking about. When I was in the playground industry, I was the CPSI certified to talk about ASTM and CPSC by NRPA, but I was also knowledgeable about IPEMA. Probably means nothing to you, but if you're in the park and rec industry, there's a lot there. So the final, really final evaluation of a good elevator speech is, have you really answered the key question of your listener, what's in it for me? And that is really the simplest way to look at it. Um, so I, this is, I think, the fourth or fifth time I just want to drive it home. <clears throat> the process steps of an elevator speech. The opening, who you are, the problem, solution, difference, and call to action. I have one last video to share with you. Uh, I think most of you, I think everybody's familiar with Shark Tank. While this is more of a sales pitch, there are certain parts of the elevator speech it, it, that we talked about. As you, as you watch this short video, look at the opening, who you are. The call to action comes very early, but the problem, the solution, and the difference, it's all wrapped up here. Next up is Dominique McLean Barty with an innovative twist to a product beloved by women all over the world. Hello, my name is Dominique McLean Barty, and my company is One Soul. I'm seeking $500,000 for 20% equity of my company. I love shoes, and one day I went to the mall and I bought a pair of shoes, and I bought it in three different colors. I went home and I went, aha, wouldn't it be easier to change the top on the shoe because the bottoms are all the same? So I set out to create this idea, and I did. It's One Soul and it's the original interchangeable shoe. I'm gonna show you how it works because it's very simple. You can quickly and easily go from one look to another, just like that, in seconds. You made it where anybody can do it. You can even change the style of the top. You can have a casual one like this, or you can even go to a dressy strappy, or a sling back, or even a clog. And it's crazy how many different looks you can get in a single shoe. And also, this shoe helped me with another problem I had. I traveled a lot and I would have a whole suitcase of just shoes. So now I don't even pack shoes. I wear my one soles, pack a handful of tops. I save space and let luggage fees. It's the perfect travel shoe. Also, we have thousands of tops to choose from. I mean, the possibilities are endless. 
and I like it. Why would we try this? Because our best feature is comfort. Perfect timing. My feet are killing me. I love because you. That entire speech, actually, from when Dominique started speaking, was one minute and sixteen seconds. Since then, uh, she was was funded by uh, Damon in in the group for five hundred thousand dollars. Since that time, this is from 2016, uh, she, one soul is sold in over 80 countries and features over 3,000 different tops and over 20 soul bases interchanged for the perfect travel shoe. It's available at Nordstrom, Shores, Amazon, and many other retail stores. So this cartoon, whoops, I accidentally pressed the elevator pitch. Don't spend all day riding up and down the elevators looking for people. It's it's just a suggestion. So uh, I'm going to get to questions in a second. I just want to give you a couple resources before we leave, before I get off this screen, and that is uh, Biz Minneapolis Business Mentors does provide uh, business planning and a host of other uses. We have free and confidential mentoring via video, phone, email, or face to face free workshops on a variety of topics, peer advisory groups, and we conduct open roundtable discussions. Check our website out at www.mbmentors.org to learn more about the workshops and training that we can help you with. So with that said, I'm going to go back to questions. Is anybody there? Oh. Um, I got one question from Mark Steven. I can't see the video. Are you sharing your screen? Yes, I was, and uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, really sorry, that the video did not come through. Okay, so I'm not going to, I'm going to hit the cancel. Um, this, this, uh, this whole session was recorded and will be played, will be available in a couple of weeks from Twin City Startup. So we can do that if, if you want to see the video or see it better, uh, feel free to text or uh, email me at brian.sakora at m mentors.org okay mark stevenson thank you glad the video came in i'm not sure why the why the video didn't work i apologize for that any other questions catherine Catherine, uh, my organization has three separate audience who value different things. Would you recommend I create three different elevator pitches for each individual potential audience? That's a, a good question. Um, I would say yes. If, if you have, I don't know how much, you could probably take bits and pieces from each one. There must be a commonality somewhere in there. Um but if you know who you're talking to and you have a specific thing, you you might you might tailor it to that. So I'm, I don't know what your organization has, but uh, I have worked with with uh, or a staffing organization that <clears throat> that uh, helps staff permanent to full and and part time and contract workers. So each one of those is a little bit different. The main story is, you know, we do part-time contracting or we, we do hiring and here's some of the areas that we offer. So I think you can add that. It might be as, as a part of the solution in the process is really identifying identifying the problem and then that solution is really what the business is that you operate. 